It's well known that keeping track of results from test cases against builds, configurations, environments, etc. can become difficult to manage. And it's easy to see too that permutations of different tests, configs, builds can grow very quickly and become unmanageable very quickly. So the key is keeping track of this in your test management tool. Looking at QA Complete in this example, we can see the overall structure that helps us manage these permutations is based on the core concept of a test set. And each test set, which might contain one or more test cases, six in this example, is then linked to a number of releases that we want to run the test against and a number of configurations that that test set needs to be run against. And it's this configurations that's the key here because we can structure the configurations so that we can report on test runs based on the configurations giving us that essential test coverage information. Within test complete those configurations are defined under the configurations area and in this example we've structured them by operating system type and then within an operating system type win uh, folder we've then broken that down by OS and browser type. So when we come to run these test sets we can associate them with those different configurations so that we know that we're running this test set and the six tests against Windows XP IE8, IE7 and IE6. So all of this comes together when we run the test set. And when we do that, the first thing QA Complete presents us with is the options to decide which release we run it against and then which configurations. And I might decide to run against three configurations, in which case I get three run windows up here. So one run window for XPI6, one run window XPI7, and a third one for XPI8. We can then run through these test cases, passing and failing at the test step level. And what we'll do here is quickly run through each of these tests within the test set. And once we've completed all the tests within the test set, we then have a set of results that are logged against that particular release and that particular configuration. And it's at this point we can start to look at our test coverage and traceability from three or four different perspectives. Firstly we can look at the run history for the test set and we can see the run against that particular configuration and that particular release. Secondly we can look at the history from the perspective of the test case and the run history of a particular test case again against a particular release and against a particular configuration. We can also look at the run history from the releases perspective so if we select the version or the release that we ran it against there we can run the traceability report here so we can see that that run against version 2 release was run against three different configurations for that particular test set. And finally we can look at the run history against the configuration. So if we come under the configurations area, look at Windows XP IE6, you can see under the run history that particular test set running against a release and a particular configuration. And of course all of this finally comes together under our reporting and dashboards. So on the dashboard side of things we can see that for a particular release, version 2, we ran a range of different test sets against those particular different configurations. And again under the reporting area we can look at the test coverage run summary by configuration report. So 
So in this example coverage report we can see for a particular version the tests that have been run against the various configurations we were testing against. And this is the key here. The ways in which the different test management tools track and report on this traceability information differs. And it's important to ensure that the reports generated deliver the kind of traceability information that your team needs to assess coverage data before a release.